Well, welcome to All Saints Church here in Brockhampton for this service for the third Sunday of Advent. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. And the second is this, love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. When the Lord comes, he will bring to light the things now hidden in darkness and will disclose the purposes of the heart. Therefore, in the light of Christ, let us confess our sins. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of light, to the glory of your name. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the collect for this third Sunday of Advent. O Lord Jesus Christ, who at your first coming sent your messenger to prepare your way before you, grant that the ministers and stewards of your mysteries may likewise so prepare and make ready your way by turning the hearts of the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, that at your second coming to judge the world, we may be found an acceptable people in your sight. For you are alive and reign with the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And our first reading is taken from Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians, chapter 5, reading from verse 16. Paul writes, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise prophecies, but test everything, hold fast what is good, abstain from every form of evil. And now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, and may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful. He will surely do it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light, that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. And this is the testimony of John, when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny, but confessed, I am not the Christ. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? And he said, I am not. Are you the prophet? And he answered, No. So they said to him, Who are you? We need to give an answer to those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. 
I want to turn back to this letter that Paul sent to the Thessalonians and the closing instructions, really, which he's giving at the end of this letter. Uh, I think that there are four broad things that Paul is saying to that church, and these are the four things I just want to quickly run through with you. The first thing, the first command, if you like, that Paul gives is to rejoice. And let's be honest, that's a rather pleasant command to receive. I grant you, it's not always easy to fulfill it, but it is worth just noting before we have a look at how we might fulfill that command. It is just worth noting that we do have a God who longs for us to be joyful. Part of what it is, if not all of what it is to be a Christian, is to live a joyful life reconciled to God. This is not a God who demands sacrifice from us like the gods of old, the kind of a, a God who demands to be bought off. No, God seeks to give us joy. And this is what Paul is saying to this church of the Thessalonians. Now, it's easy to say, of course, how do you do it? Well, Paul gives us two ways in which we might do just that. Pray without ceasing and give thanks in all circumstances. This is the way that we can, we can do these things. Now, pray without ceasing. What might that mean? I think we give a rather odd impression on what prayer is in the church. You'll see this in a minute when I come to the intercessions. So we have a model of prayer, which is somebody at the front who will lead generalised prayers. And you might at a certain point join in by saying, um, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And these are good. Don't get me wrong. I'm not decrying the fact it's important. We come together and pray. It's important that we do this corporately, but there is more to prayer than this sort of formal set pattern of prayer, which is very much the meat and drink of our Sundays together. Prayer is more than that. It's more of an ongoing conversation with God. It's a reflex which we grow and we train over time. So that when something happens that is perhaps going wrong, you pray about it there and then. You don't have to have long, formalised prayers to do that. You can simply pray, oh Lord, help me. That's a prayer. That is part of what it is to pray without ceasing. That is prayer that, if you like, becomes an ongoing conversation with God, an ongoing chuntering when things are difficult, thanksgiving when things are good. It's a kind of ongoing conversation. We rejoice at all times. And the more we do that, the more we find that actually the chuntering prayers become thanksgiving prayers as well because we trust God in what he is doing with us. The Christian life is best when it's lived consciously in the presence of God. And so Paul is asking us to pray without ceasing and to give thanks in all circumstances. When we can do these two things together, we find a great strengthening. When we can do these things together, we realise that when we face difficulty, the first thing to do is to your knees in prayer. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. The next then, do not quench the spirit. So let us assume that you've been following Paul's first bit of advice, that you have been praying more readily, praying more quickly. You are becoming therefore more aware of the presence of God with you. You are starting to feel God's spirit bubbling up within you in joy and giving you resolve to live out that Christian life. Well, Paul says, make sure you don't quench it. Don't, don't quench that flame that's flickering up inside you. As the Spirit catches you alight, do not put out that flickering flame of, flame of faith. So it is that Paul advises, do not quench the Spirit, do not despise prophecies, but test everything, hold fast to what is good. Now that begs the question, what are these prophecies that Paul has in mind? When he says, do not despise prophecies, 
What does he mean? Well, a prophet is understood as one who speaks as inspired by God. That is what a prophet is in the Old Testament. And that is certainly what we find within the New Testament too. So we might say that the prophets are those who are inspired by God, and therefore certainly the scripture itself is part of that prophecy. It is inspired by God, and therefore it is seen to be prophetic in its nature. But there are more too. In the New Testament, there are quite a few people who are called prophets. So they had the Old Testament prophecies set down for them, written in their scriptures, but there are also others who spoke as prophets as well in the New Testament. And the question then rises or raises, how do we know? If somebody comes up and says, ah, thus says the Lord, well, how do you know if the Lord indeed speaks thusly? If somebody says, I think God is saying this to you, well, how do you know whether that's the case? How can you test it? This is why Paul is saying, test everything. But that raises another question, of course. Well, how do we test it? And that's where I go full circle. If we understand that the authors of the Bible, as we do, were inspired by the Spirit of God, well, then this becomes the means by which we test what other people are saying. This is, if you like, the deposit given to us. It is the, the measure by which we test other things. And so when somebody is saying, I think God is saying this, or I think God is leading us in this way, well, we've got something we can test it against. It's important that we test everything and that we keep hold of that which is good. Paul says, test everything and hold to that which is good. He then carries on, abstain from every form of evil. Well, if you're praying and if you're testing and if you're reading your scriptures so you're aware of the kinds of things that we are testing against, well, then you're better equipped to know what the will of God is and therefore what it isn't. You're therefore better equipped to know the things that God says are good and therefore also the things that he doesn't. We know what is good and what is evil. And you might think it would be easy to restrain from doing things that are wrong, abstaining from evil, as Paul puts it. But actually, you also know that within you, there is an inbuilt temptation, which we often fall towards. We know that they are things that are attempted and that we're frail. So we need to, have to be urged to abstain from every form of evil. In the end, evil is walking away from God and walking away from his presence. It, it has a corrupting influence on us. It's like tarnish which goes on the side of some silver and when it's tarnished it doesn't reflect the glory of God so strongly. Keep away, says the apostle. And then the final thing he says, and now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely and may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful he will surely do it. Final point takes the form of a prayer. And as a prayer, it takes us into the heart of what Paul is praying for this church, what Paul is praying for each of us. And he is praying that we would be sanctified to be made holy completely and that our whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. But note this, he's not praying that you sanctify yourself. He's not praying that you keep yourself blameless. He's praying that God would do this for you and to you. He is praying that God would fill you, that God would sanctify you. You receive that and you live it out as holiness, but it is God who does this for us. There is a great truth here. So much of the Christian life, you see, is allowing God to work within us, not quenching the spirit, not despising prophecies, rejoicing always, praying continually, and allowing God to work within us. That 
is what Paul is saying to this church, this church of the Thessalonians. These are his closing instructions to them. We would do well to heed his voice as well in our own lives. Amen. And we say together the words of the Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made. Of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now let us pray. Heavenly Father, we do pray for your church. We pray for those who guide and lead it, for Richard, our bishop, and for those who work with him. We pray that you would help us to be a body of people who are open to your leading, who don't quench the spirit within us, but live rather lives full of joy as we come to you often in prayer. We pray too for our brothers and sisters around the world and particularly for those who are being persecuted for their faith. Father, we pray that you would protect them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And as we pray for the church, we pray too for the world. We pray for those who are placed in positions of great responsibility and authority. We pray for our queen and her government and we pray for their decision making. Pray, Lord, for those who advise them. We pray that they may act righteously and seek the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And as we pray for the nation, Lord, we pray too for the places where we live, for this parish of Rockhampton, for the parishes where we live, for our friends, our families and our neighbours. We thank you, Lord, for those who serve their local community and we pray you bless them in their efforts. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. We pray for those who are sick, anxious or infirm. And in a moment of quiet, we bring before you, Lord, those who are on our hearts and those for whom we've been asked to pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we remember those who have died, those who mourn their passing, we pray, Lord, you would be their strength and their comfort. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. In the tender mercy of our God, the day spring from on high shall break upon us to give light to those who dwell in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. And the peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you. Once in royal David's city Stood a lowly cattle shed Where among the later baby
her little child. He came down to earth from heaven, who is God and Lord of all, and his shelter was a stable, and his cradle was a Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendour and the majesty for everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you and of your own do we give you. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit he took flesh. As your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. And now we give you thanks because you sent him to redeem us from sin and death and to make us inheritors of everlasting life, that when he shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, we may with joy behold his appearing and in confidence may stand before him. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And great is the mystery of Christ. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so, Father, according to mind, his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, 
We bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of all the saints may praise and glorify you forever. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. And as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. Draw near with faith, receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ which he gave for you and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. The body of Christ, keep you in eternal life. And the blood of Christ keep you in eternal life. We give you thanks, O Lord, for these heavenly gifts. Kindle in us the fire of your Spirit, that when your Christ comes again, we may shine as lights before his face, who is alive and reigns now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Oh, come, all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant, oh, Sing in exult. 
invitation. Sing, O ye citizens of heaven above. Glory to God in the highest. O come, let us adore Him. O come, let us adore Him. O come, let us adore Him. God, who from the death of sin raised you to new life in Christ, keep you from falling and set you in the presence of his glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. And go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen.